our very special guest, Sarah, here with us today. Um, and we are going to learn all about her origin story and like neurodiverse struggles and everything like that. Um, so let's go ahead and get right on into that. And uh, Sarah, tell us about how you started grooming. What kind of got you into this lifestyle? <laughs> I kind of fell into grooming on accident. Um, okay. I was working for a vet. I was a veterinary assistant. And I was doing that for a really long time. And it was just, it was so sad. It was. Oh, just, it, yeah. It's not even like people say that. And you're like, well, yeah, you work at a vet. It's sad. And so right. Realize it until you're in it. And I was like, I got to do something else. Right, like, right. But I want to work with animals. Like, what am I going to do? Or I'm going to work with animals and still, like, make them feel good. And then right. one of my good friends was, she was a groomer at uh, Petco. And she mm -hmm, was mm -hmm. Come wash some dogs with me and I was like <laughs> at first I was like you know growing up you know on like farms and everything I was like people pay their dogs <laughs> but <laughs> job is a job and uh, yeah yeah three days into it I was like this is what I want to do with my life this yes! <laughs> and within a few months I had scissors in my hand and yep yep dying to learn everything and you know, almost 15 years later, here I am. Oh, wow. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Do you know your groom anniversary? I don't actually. Ah. I dug a little bit and like look. Yeah. Up. Yeah. You but could, you could figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> sure. But I don't know I why I held on to that. When mine is because like, I don't know when to count. I was self-taught, so I don't know when to count myself as a groomer. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I count my groom anniversary as my first day at PetSmart as a bather. Okay, yeah. See, I was just going to say, is it like when I started? Yeah, no, because that was my first foray into grooming. So I worked for the vet. Like, I was doing baths and nail trims, and they taught me. Oh. And so I, like. I was already kind of a shoe in for their hiring process because I already had all that experience. So I'm like, do I include that in my like time? What would your total be if you did? Oh God, I started doing that when I was probably like, I started volunteering at my local vet's office when I was like 11. Do it. So it's do been, it. So it's been about I want that total. 20 years now. <laughs> yes. Animal. Yes. And now I love it would not know someone was like what would you do if you weren't grooming and I was like I don't know how to <laughs> it's like what a... like I don't know how to human without the grooming like mm -hmm. yeah oh useless without dogs <laughs> speaking of which tell us about yours my personal dogs yes um okay I have three I have two standard poodles I have <laughs> Sable named renegade renegade yeah most gigantic stupid fluffy beast that could ever exist he's actually right here with me. Oh, hi renegade he's like whatever mom's not paying attention to me um and then i have kiki who is a little itty bitty teeny tiny red standard she was oh yeah then i have honey who is according to a dna test german shepherd amstaff and american bulldog um if I had to guess based off of her personality, I would say she was a husky chihuahua. She's afraid of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a, a chusky, if you will. <laughs> um, when I rescued her originally, I was told she was Anatolian Shepherd and Rhodesian Ridgeback, which visually, yeah, I could see it. Okay. But I'm just kind of curious. Let's just try a DNA test. Yeah, yeah. Her wisdom panel or embark, whatever I did. Yeah. And it sent back, and the first thing I saw was German Shepherd. And I was like, what? Where? Where is it? <laughs> Bitch, where? <laughs> <laughs> I just say she's an Amstaff mix. It's just easier. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and also, too, I mean, I don't remember. Oh, my chair stopped working. I'm not plugged in. Um, I just remember. I don't remember who, which one is the good one or not, but I thought there was one that was more reliable than another between Wisdom and Embark, but uh, I couldn't tell you which one. Yeah, and I'm always like, I need to like check again what I did, and then when a sale comes up for the other one, I'll try that and try and compare Oh, there you it. go. Right, right. Because um, I also that another Amstaff mix. Oh? I got a, I got a 
like coupon. So I was like, I'm going to get it for him too. Cause his, his owner would never do it. She was like, yeah, I, I care. I need to know. And his back as German shepherd, pit bull, American pit bull terrier and Rottweiler. And even then I was like, okay, that something's got to be wrong. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Or it's just like some of those are just not expressing, um, well, what's the word, as a phenotype, like, at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they always have to be like, 20% super mutt. I'm like, what? What is super mutt? <laughs> all of the others mixed together. <laughs> or, like, you're just, you really are just guessing as much as I am. Because I know yeah. Mark asks you to send in a photo. So I'm like, okay, there's someone sitting there at a desk, like dog breeds and like what is like most so i like refuse because i was like i wonder how much play into it because i feel oh like my I'm gosh no, that makes sense i had to go on google and be like yeah my dog looks like that it has to be that right right and it's like some rare ass breed that you are not gonna just rescue from the shelter kind of it's a yorkie like, whatever you say it's got long hair it must be um you know, I had a client in Florida for house call, and I don't even remember what the other, I don't know, it was Boston Terrier and something else, but this is, it's very clearly like a Maltese Yorkie something or other, um, but because it's black and white, I think it's why she says it's Boston Terrier, and I'm like, no. <laughs> and I used to work at a kennel, and and, and the dog was obviously a chow mix. She, mm -hmm. she was Merle, so there was something else, but like something else. Although I'm like, I've never seen a Merle chow before. Was just shape, hair, face, black, yeah, personality. She was a chow. And how our pricing worked in the system that we used, we needed to put her as a chow to make it work properly, right? And hey, he would look at the receipt and he'd see chow and he would lose his mind. Uh -huh every time and start yelling at us because shepherd because he has papers that says she's a shepherd and i'm like okay you have adoption papers those mean nothing about what the breed is but anyone um, can just make that up like the shelter told you it was a shepherd so they could adopt out this crazy chow because exactly because people aren't gonna adopt a chow over a shepherd also had a toy poodle and when the toy poodle got groomed the chow would attack it every time so they needed to keep them separated for like a week until the chow like realized that it was her sister but i was like i've only heard of that with cats oh my gosh yeah, this dog was insane but just every time i would be like change the paper before you print it out so it doesn't be that we put chow they would have to price it as a chow <laughs> how was she for grooming oh she was horrible oh she was horrible i mean go figure she was on the smaller side so like her aggressive tendencies like she did give warning signs so you could like see when she was like getting back. but at the same time it's just like you are such like i don't know what else is in there maybe it's a shepherd but my god you are such a chow and it would kill me that her dad was so adamant that she was not right right like hey. oh my god like that's a nice chow and i can imagine him on the street just a it's not a chow <laughs> I'm well, it's crazy too. I mean, I guess you can only lie so much, but like, it's crazy that wherever he got him from or got her from, still listed it as a breed that has a lot of housing restrictions yeah. against it. Um, but you can only lie so much, you know. But the amount of like bully mixes I've seen that are like, oh yeah, the shelter said this was a lab. <laughs> <laughs> Even now, I'm seeing. Like some of the huskies they're starting to like try and play it into different breeds like i saw one at our local shelter say it was a, a finnish spitz mix and i'm like wow you got really fancy with that and it's just a siberian husky it's a red oh mix, but it's just a husky and i'm like you guys are just really they're crazy. just trying to i don't know people want okay so with cats i don't do you i can't remember do you groom cats I used to. I can't. Uh, my shop is not safely. Set. Not not good for cats. Yeah. Um, so like, I don't know if you ever experienced the whole every domestic long hair that may have like, like the N and it's like 20 pounds or more automatic Maine Coon, Maine Coon, Maine Coon. And now, yeah. So, um, and I'm finding a lot though, is that everyone tries to grab for a breed when they just have a domestic and there's nothing wrong with that. Like the amount of cats we've had come in that are like, oh, it's a Norwegian forest cat. 
And I'm like, no, it's just some Maggie out the streets. Like, oh. it's, and that's okay. He's beautiful, but. <laughs> Crash out. You heard a kitten. You went in the dumpster. There was a kitten and you took it. You don't get yeah. to decide what breed it is. No, no. Yeah. Although I did meet a true, um, Lekoi, which is the werewolf cat. I want one so bad. Yeah, um, he was insane. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy, but I mean, I want a Welsh Terrier, so I'm... Okay, so that's just up your avenue right there. <laughs> um, no, we were able to bathe him, like, do his nails and bathe him, and he hated me scrubbing in his toes, but as I'm sure you're aware, like, they have a lot of the sphinx problems, and uh, it was nasty. I um, mean, blackheads, yeah, bumps, and... Um, his mom was like, oh, I bathe him all the time and blah, 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 blah. And he was like trying to explode out of the tub the whole time. And when I told her afterwards about that, she was like, oh, yeah, no, that that sounds right. Like, Why didn't you say he explodes? Um, we did not get a chance to dry him because we got him all wrapped up in a towel. We put him in the caddy shack vac and then he tried to actively eat the two of us. Um, and the only way we could get him out was by holding the carrier up to the caddy shack vac. And then he just walked right in <laughs> but, but she was thrilled and she's like would you please come back oh god really? and rachel's like as long as it's okay he might just get washed and thrown in the carrier like i mean she's like i don't care because she's like about to pop and <laughs> yeah yeah because she can't she he she can't get like all the waxy and shit which i get it i mean it can't be fun to have your claws forcibly pushed mm. out and then scrub, scrub, scrub. Um, but anyway, so that was an actual one, but otherwise it's every single gray cat is a Russian blue. Mm. Like, yeah. and then I get excited thinking I'm going to actually meet one of these breeds and yeah. I'm like, listed. I, um, honestly, I do that every time I have a new client, but <sighs> I'm like, is it really though? Is it really though? Like, I'll, I'll let me, I'll just look for myself. <laughs> Just says like small doodle, and you're like, okay, this is probably going to be a hundred pounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, we don't know. It's just Russian roulette at this point. Right. Yeah. Um, I had an old English sheepdog. Oh, it's always. Oh. Um, I'm assuming it, I thought Mogo had a lot of the doodle names in there, or maybe they didn't look hard enough. Thankfully, she was a mini. Uh, sheep a doodle, oh. but I thought I was gonna actually meet like I mean I really don't want to meet one of those either because that's a lot of freaking hair. But still, I'm like just call it what it is. Don't make it up. This tangent, uh, this was a big tangent, but that's okay. I enjoy it. We like the diversions and the tangents, and we like to take the scenic route. So every single groomer can agree with us on that. If yeah, just say what your dog is mixed. Mm -hmm instead of making up these, these made up terms that these backyard breeders are coming I literally do it for fun like I would never be like oh yeah um, Sarah has a Chosky yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> I just like smushing the words together but it's fun and it's cute to do it as a joke but when you're being yeah. about what your dog is especially when they get into this F1B crap I'm like oh, oh my god you don't even know that. <laughs> like yeah like you want to tell me anything about genetics like just tell me one fact about like yeah. yeah well that's like the ones that they'll be like when is his adult coat gonna come in when is he gonna when is he gonna look like this and i had one lady she was pissed off that his coat was straight oh, was although that's like a dream for but, us but when is it gonna get curly and i was like there's a very high potential because he was already six months old i'm like there's <sighs> it's not just gonna and I was like, I mean, it could, what I'm right. could change drastically, but odds are he's probably not. And I was like, do you know what his parents look like? Even though then it's, it doesn't matter, but yeah, yeah. He showed me his parents and it was like, literally it was like a standard poodle and a golden retriever. So I was like, okay, even more crap shoot. It's every well, and, and that's why I try to very gently explain. Um, Cause I'll be like, I'll be like, you know, when genes of two different breeds are mixed, it is a crap shoot and you don't know how it's going to, how, you know, the different genes are going to express. And like, I have a really good spiel about it, but it's like in the same litter and it's just, they're have one that's going to look exactly like dad and one that's going to look exactly like mom. Yeah. Little Frankenstein pup in the middle. 
you know, does somehow look like both. And then I tell them, but it's also like with humans, it's, it's like yeah. people that have multiple children, they don't, yeah, siblings look similar. Yes. And there's some that do look really similar, but then there's some that like my, my oldest brother and myself, we both have the same parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not any, you would never know we were siblings if we didn't tell you. Yeah. And my middle brother, everyone thought we were twins our entire life because Aww. We I try and put it into that perspective with people because it's also like, right, right. Might have you know thick black curly hair, and your sister might have stick straight blonde hair. Right, you're it's... really gonna know. And even then, too, it's you could keep breeding them together, but that doesn't mean that the result is gonna be the same. No, <laughs> but please don't. <laughs> stop. Please stop. No, that is funny though, because like um, I'm the eldest of three, and my baby brother and I. Um, look very like scarily like our dad and then the middle sister looks like our mom and it's just it's really weird how it played out because like we don't I don't think my sister and I look alike at all mm -hmm. um, but like my brother and I if you put us side by side like especially because we actually have pretty similar hair right now except his is not oh. purple <laughs> Oh, man, my screen is mirrored, so I keep trying to, like, push my hair the wrong way. I went back purple, but I have a bad habit of washing my hair too much. Oh. But I'm going to get touched up for Pet Quest, so I'll be nice and nice. Oh, and there you go. Nice yeah. and vibrant. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this is, um, I think this is Opaz or Crazy Liberty. I don't remember. Rachel just you would use did it. <laughs> well okay because rachel was like well i have all of this uh grooming like i have all this dye do you want me to just do your hair and i was like i mean if it's good for the dog it's good for me and we did blue and the blue was good but the purple is holding a lot better and now i'm never going back yeah, i'll try opa's next yeah because i went to a salon yeah and it was it was great because there was like this old lady who was sitting in the other chair and i could see her glaring at me and i was like mind your <laughs> Like, how fucking dare you put a natural color on your hair? Actually, one of my neighbors, she's like in her 70s and she saw me and she was like, where do you get your hair done? And I was like, oh, yeah, I go to, you know, I go to this girl at this salon. Yeah. Or I texted her and I was like, please tell me you dye your hair. And she was like, I'm thinking about it. And I was like, yes. <laughs> it makes me so sad when like little old ladies see my hair at various stages of my life and they're like i'm too old to pull i'm like bitch please like you of all people people are gonna look less harshly on like an 80 year old toddling around with pink hair like amazing every time i see an old person with colored hair i'm like hell yes gonna be me that's yep funny. it's good. yep <laughs> i am never growing my freaking hair back i don't care i'm not doing it it's been annoying enough just to grow out the top i'm attempting to grow it out after i shaved it we'll see Ooh. how long i yeah good we'll luck good luck <laughs> i love i love when it's shaved so i also have trichotillomania so i pull my hair out and oh pull okay it. yeah pull it out so it benefits me greatly mentally to not yeah I'm going to see how long I can get it to go before I go nuts. Because the first thing okay. I had, I was, I had a pixie cut. I had cut it really short and I was at work. I was waiting for my next dog and I was holding my bravura and I was like, I've always wanted a mohawk and just right down the side of my back. <laughs> what are you doing? And I was like, hey. yeah, cutting my hair. And then I realized that I couldn't like even it out. So then I had to like go into a barber shop and then oh what did you do yeah precision stuff i mean <laughs> that is how i first shaved my head i just put like a half inch guard on and did it and i was like huh and i put like the red one on i was like huh and then i did 40 reverse and shaved it all off and i was like this is good <laughs> like give myself a like grace period i was just like eh, here we go yep um, yep i love it you know, thought to like someone was like was it an accident to go that short and i was like nope and i will not on my desk right now i have not accidentally taken the wrong length to it yet. hopefully now that i yeah happen no i mean i same though yeah it's every i don't know how but it just hasn't happened for me yet it, like, i have I'm so paranoid oh. about it that i'm constantly checking that i'm like oh, yeah 
this is it this is it this is it. i think it's an anxiety thing that keeps me yeah, from doing sometimes it sometimes i'll be like going and i'm like has it been a long time since your hair cut or am i cutting off more hair than i think i am and then i pan <laughs> throughout more since last time it's okay yeah yeah <laughs> well as we are starting to touch on neurodiverse stuff let's take a quick break and listen to a message from one of our sponsors okay may and we Yes. Could you maybe pull your microphone a little bit away from your face? Thank you. Uh, Sarah is very quiet. <laughs> oh, and I'm being very loud. Well, I, need to just, I can speak louder if I know. It, it was fine. It was just like you're very, yours is very quiet, and then Meg's was very loud, like relatively. Yeah. <laughs> I got you. Okay, that makes me feel better. Like, but like, I'm like the two contrasting. I can't handle it. You like? I'm sorry. It's okay. You could have told me way sooner. <laughs> I tried to send you a message so I didn't have to like. <laughs> oh, I am not looking at my phone. Oops. Oops. Are you guys? Is this better though? Yeah. Okay. Like if I tap my what? twice, you gotta do. <laughs> I will not catch it. Yeah. I won't either. Look, I'm drinking. Because I... you, you made me. Yay! It worked. <laughs> <laughs> I drink water when I'm taking my medication, but I'm. Fuck! I forgot to take my medication. I'm the kind of person that once I start, like I'll take a sip of water and I'm like, oh my god, I'm so thirsty, and like chug the entire thing. <laughs> I just never, like, yeah, willingly like will be like, oh, I'm eating. I need a glass of water, or like, oh, I'm right. Go get water, but it. Uh, Right. I don't drink other things throughout the day. I'm just not a drinker of things. Well, I hope you get better <laughs> because I notice when I'm really good at it, it's just everything is nicer mm -hmm. and I can really tell that it hurts me when I don't. So yeah. I definitely I'm, you know, the only reason that I drink water regularly is because now I've been doing the liquid IV every time. Well, that's <laughs> smart. I yeah. Should. There, you can kind of hijack it. So if you're going to drink something, at least drink something water, like... Add things to your water. and I'm Super, yeah, that. yeah. Um, so yeah, so like all of this will be on YouTube, but it will be cut out of the podcast itself. Mm. So I will ask you about neurodiverse stuff now when we come back. Um, and feel free to say as little or as much as you want about okay. it. No, I love I love talking about it because... Yay. We all do. <laughs> well, yeah. No, that's the whole point of this whole thing, like I was saying. But anyways, okay. And we're back. So I had hinted that we were going to talk about neurodiversity because, of course, why wouldn't we as grooming on the spectrum? Um, so, Sarah, uh, feel free to share with us kind of what you struggle with, um, like your neurodiversities, and then like how that's affected grooming, being a business owner, which we've didn't even like finish your origin story, but we'll get there. Yeah, it's okay. We're not here to talk about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I've struggled with a lot of things that went undiagnosed or misdiagnosed as a. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I had a really hard time focusing in school, so they were like, "Oh, it's ADHD," and you know, and then my parents are like, "Oh, we can't pump her full of chemicals. We'll just do this." <sighs> I've always had sensory issues, and you know overload issues and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all the typical things that now as an adult I was like why didn't you take me to be evaluated to see if I was on the spectrum right but also too you know back in the 90s and early 2000s that wasn't really common and well and especially not for young yeah. girls like and, um I was definitely higher functioning um it wasn't until actually last year that a psychiatrist took me seriously and was like, all of these things that you were being treated for before, I don't think you have. And she was kind of like, I think you're definitely on the spectrum. She was like, I know we can't say it anymore. She was like, if I would say it, I would say Asperger's. And I was like, okay. Yeah, no. Cause that is that not makes a, a lot. Yeah. She was like, if I said it this way, you're going to understand it because she was like, if I went into the semantics and the details and trying to explain it, you're not going to understand it. And I was like, well, you could have just said autism. And I would have been like that makes a lot of sense and right. what really um like you were saying of like how it would affect grooming what i would really notice is just there would be days that i would just 
the sound of the dryers, the sound of dogs barking, the sound of dogs whining, the phone ringing, even listening to like the sound of the hose in the tub sometimes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. make my skin crawl and I yeah. have an absolute meltdown and I wouldn't be able to focus and I would have to like go outside and sit in my car and be like, no. Mm. Yeah. And my original psychiatrist was like, you're just bipolar. You're having a manic episode. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, why would I be having a manic episode about too much noise? Yeah. Right, right. It make any sense. And then even I would tell him too, is like, look, this happens at home too. Like, my husband would be eating and the sound of him chewing would make me want to jump out the window. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. mind. And he was like, ah, that's a normal. And I was like, that's, that's not. No, that's not a normal reaction. Thank you, but sir. The same thing. Like, it's probably just ADHD. People with ADHD have sensory issues. And I'm like, okay. Is that- well, yes, yeah, but a- don't just drop it. Um, like, But I also don't fit into the other parts of that category. Yeah. I, you know, of course, would be doing the research myself. And it wasn't really until I started talking to other people who were actually, you know, diagnosed on the spectrum. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. that is making a lot of sense. I have that, too. Like, I was talking to... I was actually talking to one of my clients about the yeah. dog has, he's a poodle, but he's got a really thick, wiry coat. And just touching him when he's wet makes me want to throw up. I cannot touch this dog when he's wet. When he, Yeah, yeah. I have to have someone else bathe him because I can't touch him. And she was very particular that it had to be me. And I had to like tell her, like, look. I literally I can't. bathe your dog. Oh, yeah. This sounds insane. I understand if you don't want to use me because I have to yeah. touch your dog, but like you can meet the bather and you can get to know her and I will absolutely do 99% of the rest of the work. I just can't touch him when he's wet. And she kind of laughed and I felt like she was laughing at me. And then she was like, no, nope, I'm autistic. I get it. And I was <laughs> like, oh, this couldn't have happened. One of us. One of yeah. us. <laughs> and then I was like, you know, maybe that's me. And then, and then I was kind of like, you know what? Maybe I need to talk to a different psychiatrist. Yeah, yeah. And so I started my new psychiatrist. And right away, like from the get-go, she was like, I don't think you have any of these. Aww. Um, I do have PTSD. But she was like, I don't think it's as fear as they were making you think it was. Yeah, and yeah. And like all this other stuff. And she was like, yeah, we're throwing ADHD out the window. She was like, that is okay. not anything that I think is going on. And then that's, you know, and then she would listen to me more and through more sessions, that's when she was kind of like, hey, look, I, and I, cause I didn't even mention being on the spectrum. Right. I'm right. just making this up in my own head. And then she brought it up and then I was like, it was so validating, uh, but then frustrating that nobody else picked it up. Before. Caught it. Yeah. Everyone was just like, nope, here, here yeah. you go. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Next. When I started going to more trade shows and getting to know more groomers. Oh. how many groomers are on the spectrum. Mm-hmm. It's Indeed. Heck. And then I, I think a lot of it too is, you know, working with animals is a lot easier than working with people for us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like me. And we, we just understand me, them better. I, like my social anxiety is really bad. Like a lot of people don't believe that because I'm a very bubbly and talkative and social person. And when I'm out there doing things, I'm really good at it. It's because we can mask yeah, like but, really good. So I shut. <laughs> down because that overload of having to talk to people that much is always yeah. exhausting and frustrating and that also affects when I'm dealing with clients and having to talk to clients mm-hmm. I dread mm-hmm. even if it's a client that I've had for 10 years I dread the check-in process yeah they mundane oh hi how are you doing how are the kids you know what are we doing today and like like just give me your yeah, dog I mean, you don't want to talk about your life and everything. Whereas I'm just like, I just want to go groom your dog now. I don't want to talk to you. And I think yeah. people mistake me for being an asshole because I don't, I actually complain that I wasn't being personable enough with him. Like he wanted me to actually like come out and have a conversation and chat with him about things. Like you're not paying me to talk he to wanted you. wanted to get to know me. And I was like, that's not what I'm here for. Like, yes, I like you, and I'm sure your family's great, and I'm sure your job is wonderful, but those five, ten minutes I'm spent talking to you about things that, quite honestly, I don't care about, Mm -hmm. and working on your dog instead of you calling me before I call you and it's like, oh, is he ready yet? Like, 
Like, no, <laughs> you sent me behind. So I was kind of, so I try now to kind of like, if I get to know clients well, to kind of let them know that like, you know, it's not. Some days I'm not gonna. Personal, I'm just not a very talkative person. It's not yeah. that I'm trying to be mean. I'm just not good at it. And I'd yeah. rather not do it. Because I also too, I try like, even though like the sounds of work bother me, I try not to keep my headphones on or ear protection on if I'm like not actively drying a dog so I can like really engage if someone's talking to me because especially my employees are always coming up to me to ask me a question Mm, yeah so I've kind of learned ways to like channel out the noises which took a long time Uh, okay I think that also helps clients too like me not having the headphones on because I'll walk I got you. And waving at me because our salon is wide open. People can come in for a self wash. We take walk in nail trim. So there's always people coming and going. And yeah. And I've got my headphones on, which are right here, ready for love it. Love dogs it. Dogs start doing stuff. I think a lot of clients would take it personally that I could. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I can't. You just, you just appear more like shut off yeah. with the. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I don't even have music playing. They're just on to muffle the Yeah, just the noise cancellation alone. New earplugs. The feeling of foam earplugs is not my friend. I Same. can't the only kind that I can handle, and I can speak for Stephanie on this one, I know it, are the loop yeah, headphones. We had talked about that and I was gonna buy some and I forgot to. So I'm gonna Here's your reminder. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they my, I still don't love the feeling of them in my ears but i can handle it it's better than yeah Yeah. foam is especially the sound of the foam when it's expanding uh yeah (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. i love how we all you just sent a shiver down all of our spines (laughs) and then you talk to you know someone who's not on the spectrum and they're like what is wrong with you like, what do you mean the sound that it makes? Yeah, I was trying to explain to someone the other day, too, about um, paper straws. So I live in California. We are mm. not allowed to have plastic straws here, and that has ruined my life. I have, If I do go to a fast food restaurant, I have to ask them to put the straws into my cups for me. And every time they're like, then they're like, oh, this lady's just lazy. And I'm like, the sound of a paper straw and the feeling going into the plastic lid that's it. I, I'm done. I will not be able to drink it. I will not be able to eat my food. I am done. We also have wooden utensils everywhere. Nowhere has plastic utensils anymore. Wood. Interesting. Yeah, wood touching my teeth. Nope. Can't do corn dogs, popsicles, anything like that. I can. I, I would have to like carry like a key ring of like utensils around everywhere. I, in my purse, I have my my little like travel utensils, metal utensils that I use. And I had to search for ones that were small. I big spoons, big forks are not not no go. So I had to search for small ones. So like I had to find camping ones. Yeah. I love this so much because also yes, small is mm-hmm. best, but I cannot stand metal. <laughs> <laughs> so if you said, Oh, I have metal ones, I'm like, Yeah. Uh- Ugh. <laughs> There are times that if I do accidentally bite down on it, I do have to gingerly take my food off of it. If I do bite down on it, then that's also game over. It's one of those things where, like, when you're eating something soft and it crunches. Mm-hmm. Yep. You de- um, and then, like, and like I especially if it, if it's metal in like a plastic container, it isn't as bad. But it is metal on like a ceramic plate yep. that I mm-hmm. or like my glass plates. <gasps> Mm-hmm. <laughs> glass plates yeah i have uh these they're crystal actually um they're ones that my grandma got they were like princess house ones and i took them when she passed and i love them so they're beautiful to look at <laughs> i'm like a nightmare to eat off of but the the great thing was though when I was at Stephanie's house is that like that first that dinner or whatever you guys like snapped to it immediately and we're like okay here's the I only remember a plastic plate and like here's a uten- plastic utensil or I don't remember but yeah we had we you had, guys adapted we gave to you one of the Harry Potter uh, when people already know and they prepare and it's like you're just crazy like um so actually this 
last Hershey, um, Mm -hmm. my employees and I were staying in an Airbnb and I was like, from the get go, I was like, look, I am paying double so I can have my own room. Ah, yeah. Everyone's going to be sharing a bed or whatever. And I was like, I need my own space and Mm -hmm. quiet and not being to be touching anybody. Mm -hmm. So at first, all of them were like, no, you're just bougie and want to be by yourself. And I was like, well, yeah, actually. I (laughs) I mean, well, (laughs) I won't say no. I mean, I was like, I will own up to it. And even when I do go to visit my aunt and uncle in Buffalo, they have a spare room, but my aunt will get me a hotel room because she's like, I'm not going. Oh, because she knows. She's like, I'm not going to subject you to sharing a bathroom with everyone and like having to, you know, wake up when we wake up. And I was like, that's she's she's truly my mom. Because she gets Can you tell her I love her? <laughs> okay. <laughs> she, she would probably adore you. But like it's things like that where like, and I deny it. So I'm like, don't spend your money on me. And she's like, no, you're going to be miserable. Like, you need to enjoy your trip. And I'm like, okay, this is, this is fine. This is perfect. Ah, Yeah, because I need yeah. silence. Well, and even to, like, coming up for Pet Quest, it was kind of the same thing. I think we're sharing an Airbnb, and I was like, I need my own space. Like, I will sleep in the garage if I have to. It's- right. <laughs> So uh, I keep mentioning, I keep hearing you mention employees and business, and this would be a great opportunity to put out a, if you're still looking for someone, feel free to use this platform. Desperately searching for employees. So I am not the owner, uh, but I am the manager. I've been. Okay. Okay. Almost 10 years now. Wow. Uh, That's awesome. Are located in the San Francisco Bay area. We're about 20 miles south of San Francisco itself very very busy shop we are booked months in advance i think my next full grooming appointment with any of my employees is august right now um even baths were booked out weeks at a time uh yeah we are very we have a huge wait list but our clients are fantastic we do have some delusional doodle well i mean for the most part our clients are great great tippers we are yeah most expensive shops in the area uh yeah. But we are open to part time, full time, honestly, whatever days and times you want to work, you can do whatever you want. Because I mean, <laughs> what if it's like temporary? Uh, because I'm going to be traveling. I have many times had guest groomers come in. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're traveling to the San Francisco Bay Area and want to make a quick buck and play with some dogs, <laughs> let me know. I'm. Awesome. And if people need a CPR certification, yes, I got you there too. Um, I'm going to put it right here. Uh, We're going to now take a minute to listen to a message from one of our sponsors because I need to go. I will be right back. Who are the, I'm not, uh, well, here, Stephanie, why do, do you want to talk about that while I desperately go? Because I'm not going to say much because it, this is going on YouTube, but I will be right back. Okay. Well, what was the question? Who are the sponsors? Uh, so, me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Meditative Groomer Academy. Uh, Elevation Media Management, <laughs> which is Meg. Oh, you do. And um, positive, ed- positive approach coaching. Ooh, okay. So, I know I've watched the videos before, and my brain knows they're there. I just couldn't remember. So, I was like, yeah. What is uh, it? It's I'm like this time's going by, and someone's sponsoring, and I don't even know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Renegade is desperately trying to get my attention now. Aww. A large-headed man. He's so tired. He gets really upset when I'm sitting at the computer desk and not paying attention to him. Yeah. Actually, yesterday I, I was... near you. <laughs> I was playing The Sims and he was laying here with his head rested on me and my Sim was taking her cat to the vet and he noticed the dogs on the screen and lost his mind. He was ready to fight all of those tiny dogs. <laughs> yeah, you dumb man, huh? <laughs> oh, hello, friend. He's very upset that I'm not paying attention to him. How dare? How very dare? He gets very upset when I'm at the computer desk and not include. Oh. 
Yeah. That's the- Sorry, Bubba's. Uh, did you tell her our sponsors? Yes. Okay, cool, cool. Um, okay, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I um, I dared to eat. How dare I? Yeah. Um, Any whoms. So, let's see, let's see. I'm trying to think. Do you want to talk about, like, <gasps> the baby? any ambassadorship? or anything like that because you think this isn't like you're more than welcome to like other people have like i don't yeah half the time people don't even know that i have any because i don't really talk about them like people just think that i just work for foxy roxy and i'm like yes but also i'm sponsored by them and i'm also right his best friend and groom loop see i didn't even know all that i used to have it on my profile and then i realized that people are catty bitches and i didn't want I never put yeah. loyalty on my on my yeah. because I was just like I don't even uh, 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 <laughs> comes with like representing one company that like has been problematic in any way or people don't like them and it's just like yeah you're... yeah yeah I feel you <laughs> so yeah <laughs> um okay cool so when we come I don't even remember what I I didn't cut off a, a big train of thought did I I don't. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, (laughs) Okay, so then we will come back in and I will. I know what I'll ask you. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, There's nothing bad. I'm just going to ask, like, what are some of the most meaningful relationships you've built in the grooming industry? Because that's a perfect tie in to that or talking about whoever. So up on its own. you're not obligated to say us, by the way. <laughs> I'm just being a like, shit. <laughs> a, a, lot of, a lot of good people. Yeah. Okay, cool. So and we're back. So Sarah, tell us what are some of the most meaningful relationships that you have uh, built in your as your time during your time as a groomer? There we go. Yeah, I've met a lot. A lot of people, a lot of, a lot of great people. And, um, you know, and a lot of these people have helped me get to be where I am today. Um, obviously shameless plug Blake Hernandez was one of the, uh, one of the first people that I really met within the industry. Uh, Aww. all these years ago, God, it was so long. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he was one of the first people that, you know, I met, got to know, became really good friends with, and then kind of dragged me into it he was kind of oh you're gonna compete and you're gonna help me compete and you're gonna do this that and the other and because I, I was terrified i was like i could yeah i could never do any of that and you know and then through blake i ended up meeting jill with foxy roxy oh mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. relationship kind of just blossomed um Aww. jill is an incredible person and she saw something in me, her and Blake saw something in me that I didn't even see. And it helped give me confidence to really put myself out there and really start going to more trade shows and get yeah. people and becoming friends with, you know, a lot of now that like back when I first started going to trade shows, I would look at some people and be like, Oh my God, this famous groomer. I want to be like them someday. And now these are people that I'm going to trade shows and at, we wrap up at the end of the day and I'm going out to dinner with them and having drinks. Aww. And it's, it's mind blowing to think that I made it that way. And even, right. You know, it's still kind of mind blowing to me that I'm good enough that people want to sponsor me. And oh, uh, yeah, so I am sponsored by Foxy Roxy Supply Co. I am part of their pro groom team. Uh, nice. Amazing group of groomers. And through that, I also gained a sponsorship from Groomer's Best Friend, who is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then also Groom Loop. She, a uh, very small independent businesswoman. She is incredible. And Nancy, right? Yes, Nancy. Nancy. If you have not checked out her loops, shameless plug. I've seen some really, really yeah. nice prints, like Lisa Frank, and I'm yeah, like, she did the leopard spot <laughs> and the tiger stripe and the leopard spot ones. When she first released those, they sold out like instant. 
Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. The demand was on, but she just started doing breed specifics with poodles, bichons, everything. And they're honestly the sturdiest loops I've ever tried. And I. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. But it was just that, you know, once I started networking and getting to meet other people, I was meeting Mm -hmm. another other businesses and other companies. And like, I've worked with companies like Scouts Honor and Dematador. Oh, cool. Um, gotten to know them. And it's been really cool and really fun to just network with all of these different people. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. it being behind the scenes is a lot different from being a spectator. Because when you're a spectator, it's exciting and it's fun and you just want Right. And you can't wait to learn and do more. And then I kind of felt like I hit a plateau where it was like, I took as many classes as I could that were beneficial to me. And Mm -hmm. not to say that there aren't new and upcoming classes that are changing because there definitely are. Um, I just kind of hit a wall where I just felt like, yeah, I couldn't improve more than I was. And I was like, how, because we never stop learning. Right. Right. Only way you're going to learn more and you're going to grow more is to put yourself out there and really, Yep. Start forcing yourself to meet these people and and start working with all these other things. And it's been it's been life changing. Do it scared. <laughs> yeah. Literally that bounces around in my head. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah. Do it scared. Yeah. <laughs> the most terrifying moments for me was um Foxy Roxy sponsors the best first timer award. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And normally Blake or Kat, you know, who are used to being in the spotlight and talking will be the ones to do the announcements to introduce that. And they were, yeah. they were both in the class and they, and Jill Pino comes up and she's like, someone needs to come do this announcement. And Jill was like, there's you. Oh. And I've never been good at public speaking. I can oh. to anybody. And um, I had to go up there and do the announcement. And Terry D. Marino was sitting in the front row and she was like, giving me thumbs up. Aww. I was really nervous. And she was even like, raise the microphone up a little bit. Yep. Yep. Speak. And I was freaking out. And I remember like just a few minutes later, I, I was back in the booth and I was like shaking. And I texted my husband, I was like, I just had to go up in front of like 200 people. And, oh. and then he's like, did you record it? And I was like, no, my thought wasn't to record myself. And then I was like, wait, that was live. That was on groomer TV. Oh no! Like, but then you can just go on Facebook and watch it if you want to. Yeah, but yeah. Actually, did a really good job, and like that kind of gave me the confidence. So then that kind of became my like unofficial job when I would be at the shows that. Yeah, know, yeah. Award, and that helped me kind of get over that fear. And then even too, I had to be in a couple of the best first timer win photos. And at first, I was like, "What do I do?" I was like, "Run, run, another." Her. he was like how do i pose hold this ribbon and smile and i was like oh okay that makes sense and then after like the third one i was like okay i can do this but the first i got the first it first one i had to do it which actually ironically was literal minutes after i was told that i made the foxy roxy team so i was like bawling hysterically and like oh. i was out of breath because i had to run over to the booth that i'm like you can see my face is all red i'm like <laughs> and like that poor girl has this like awesome wind photo and I'm just in the almost eh. oh, like having a time <laughs> Pretty much. like I ruined that poor girl's photo but it was just it was really good to help me and now I look at him like that's really cool like, like it might not be cool to someone else to like just be yeah photo but for me it was like this is not somewhere I ever imagined I would be and I do get a lot of questions where people are like well how did you get your sponsorships and I was like it wasn't easy like you well, it's not like they're just going around like handing you out sponsorships in a little basket kind of thing. Like work, and you have to, you know, try to get yourself noticed. And now I realize that that is, you have to be afraid, but you need to be ready to face that fear and just go in and dive into it because you're, yes. you're never going to move forward if you don't force yourself to do it. And I wouldn't have been able to do it without the great amount of support that I had around me and I Mm -hmm, encourage mm -hmm. people too is like don't be afraid to chat with the person sitting next to you in your class or ask right right and even you know in Hershey 
this is actually kind of a sad but funny story is we were uh-huh. in one of the restaurants and I went to the bathroom and I heard someone crying and she was in a stall and she was crying and I'm so sorry if she's listening to this I won't say oh. um, but I am normally really bad when people are emotional around me yeah I'm like they're, they're there like Stop. they're there um but I was like I can't just walk away so I like asked her I was like hey are you okay what's going on and of course I'm thinking like something horrific happened and she deadpan goes my lizard died at first my reaction was to laugh and then I was like don't be an asshole yep 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 no clearly this means a lot this is her pet so I Oh, her my sympathies and I was like are you here with anyone can I go get someone for you and she was like no by myself and she was like I'll be okay and like so I you know left the bathroom and I went back to my and I had a view of the bathroom and she still didn't come out after like 10 minutes and so I mentioned it to my friend who was with me and she was like let me go in and talk to her and you know see if she wants to come sit with us and whatever so she went in and talked to her a few for a few minutes she came out and she just kind of shrugged she was like I think she just needs to to work so a few more minutes went by and she came out and like I saw her and I waved and I was like you are totally more than welcome to come and sit with us and she did and we became really good friends and <gasps> Oh. You know, I got to introduce her to a lot of people. Like, I remember she was like, we were uh, we were sitting, hanging out with Todd, the president of Barclay. And she was like, I can't. Yeah. Next to the president of Barclay. And I was like, talk to him. You know, don't be afraid. Just say hi. And that's what I want to encourage with people is it's like, I know a lot of people are afraid to like walk up to sponsored groomers or famous groomers. And yeah. But I, maybe there's a handful or a few that are not nice people. We're not right. Getting, right. But I don't think I know a single person who gets upset when someone walks up to them and wants to tell them they're a fan or they love their videos or. They- right. Right. Like, it's the best feeling in the world. Like, especially for me, when people started recognizing me at first, it was like, dude, <laughs> how do you <laughs> am? And now it's like, it gives you like, tingly happy feelings yeah someone likes your work that much or even likes right right like she remembered me from selling her a pair of scissors and she was like you're the nicest person like you oh i didn't feel like you were forcing me to buy any right right questions and i was like yeah there's a lot of pushy salespeople, but it's like i'm not doing this to try and sell you a pair of scissors like if you right. want them and you like them then yeah i'm gonna encourage it but you know, I always just want to help everyone learn. And that's one thing I tell people is it's like, it doesn't matter what your favorite pair of scissors are. It doesn't matter what your favorite brush is. It doesn't matter what your yeah who is. It yeah. gets the same result at the end. And it was done safely and happily. And you feel mm-hmm. that's what's important. Right. I think that's what a lot of like newer groomers starting out or groomers that haven't really like started going to trade shows and meeting their groomers. Right, stuck in that mentality that they have to do it. Ha- yeah, have to use or the exact same thing that this person is. Be yeah, or they're never going to be better because someone else does it that way. And I'm like, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's if the end right. result ends up the same way, and that dog is okay, look good, <laughs> clean, happy, healthy. <laughs> oh, and I feel like all of us at the end of the day, and even like all these, you know, famous groomers out there, outside the trade show, they're scrubbing buttholes just like the rest of us you know i love it oh my god yes they're picking dingleberries off i mean and and that's what i try to tell people if they ever feel like they seem nervous you know like a lot of times people be like oh plague is over there i'm so scared to talk to him i'm like he is the last person in the world who is going to be bothered or annoyed by you wanting to say hi to him like you so when was it? I think it was Atlanta of 21? No. Yes. So that would have been maybe. when I met you. I think it was that. I think it was like one of the first ones open again after COVID. Yeah, I think it was that one. When it was in like June instead of March, I think. Yeah. It was the first. One. Yeah. So that one, he literally came and seeked me out and like did the whole like this. <laughs> And that made my freaking day, week, month, year, because I was like, that means that Blake saw me before I saw him and he decided to come 
and surprise me. So like, I definitely get like the, I still get that way around people that I perceive as more popular and more like with mm-hmm. it than me. Um, yeah. I- but then like I have people, but like, then people seek me out and like recognize me. And I'm like, yeah, I think like, my biggest, like, oh my God, I made it moment was when Jay Scruggs walked up to me and introduced himself to me. And I'm like, I know who you are. <laughs> his dinner with me. And I was just like, Jay Scruggs <laughs> just walked up and introduced himself to me. <laughs> like what and I have and then like the next day when I was dressed up as Roxy I don't know if you've seen it Stephanie yes oh logo yeah well, it's fabulous he came up the next day and wanted to take a picture of me and I was even still just like Jay Scruggs <laughs> I am and I like even went home to my husband and I was like Jay Scruggs knows who I am and he was and he's probably like, he was like who who's Jay Scruggs I don't know I was like a dad <laughs> blasphemy <laughs> but that was one of those like i made it moments and it felt really good so i understand that blake walking up to you because like i had one of those moments in tacoma actually this year who was <laughs> um karina actually came up to me yes. and like i love her like called me by name <laughs> and like she was she thanked me for um standing up for her in a Facebook group. And I'm like, Karina knows me. <laughs> <laughs> As we're all fangirling here or fan peopling here, I'll go with fangirl. It's fine. Um, let's pause and take our last uh, message from our sponsor. Whatever. Mm. <laughs> words. Who knows? Words. Who needs words? I'm so excited. I miss Trey. I am excited to see pictures and everyone posting about it so I can get FOMO. What What shows are you going to this year? Well, all American for sure, because I'm going to literally be there. There. Yeah. Um, Did you see a reason? A reason to go. A reason. I was like, it's called Racine. I thought you were saying like Racine, Wisconsin. Really weird. I was like, Raisin? No. <laughs> That's cute, but no. <laughs> um, but no, all American. And then I have the possibility and capability of going to Hershey. I just haven't quite decided. It kind of depends on how much money I make up until that point. Because then I will be going to Hershey and then fucking around until New England and then visiting all my family in like Pennsylvania and Virginia and making it back up to Wisconsin for the retreat. Hi, dog. Aww. Hi. Oh. It's a baby. It's a baby. Oh, sweet baby. Yeah. yeah every- he said, hug me. All she wants is to be held. Yeah. She is a puppy or a miniature, but she is a standard. Oh, and now the other two are wrestling. <laughs> I hear it. <laughs> um, are you going to any of those per chance? Um, I think I'm going to All American and then definitely going to Hershey. Okay. I think I do want to make it work. I mean, Hershey was incredibly overwhelming for me last year. A lot. Hey. Um. But, like, I feel like it's just it's such a good opportunity. And if I'm going to be right there, I'm like, maybe Angie can have me work for her for, like, the two weeks in between Hershey and New England or something. I don't know. Have you ever gone to the Barkley Honors? I did go. Last year was my first Hershey, and I went to the dinner, and I did not look like me. I love it. It's my favorite, too, because I never wear makeup, and I never dress up, and then I get to, like, surprise everyone. Like, look. No, so, like, Marky brought uh, an extra dress that was actually, like, the exact shade of my hair, but very, very sparkly, and I had one of the bombshell bras from Victoria's Secret, so I did not look like me at all, because I typically tend to make them not be apparent, Um, and it was funny, because Chris Anthony, actually, she was just like, 
where have you been hiding those? And I'm like, they're fake. It's not real. It's, it's all, a, it's a lie. It's a hoax. <laughs> a lot of us like to do that just for that, that little wow factor. I love, yeah. I love watching like all the men put their fancy suits on. Like, how does mm-hmm. they all go for like the floral, sparkly, like in your, and I love it. It's, oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> Yes. So, what do we want to talk about the last segment? Because we do have another segment to go. That's a good question. I don't know. Let's see. What? See, this is why, this is exactly why, like, I'm like, maybe I should actually come up with a list of I'm questions. I'm terrible at coming up with ideas, but if you get me started talking about something. Okay. I'm ramble. I'm just what trying- is the tattoo on your right shoulder? My right shoulder or her right shoulder? Yours. I got nothing. I have multiple. Which one? <laughs> There's one that's orange. This one? Yeah. The Welsh Terrier. Oh, awesome. Yeah. There's a poodle above it. Nice. Yeah, they're hard to see, but everybody thinks that my Welsh Terrier is fake. In person, if we ever meet in person, it has a white outline, so it looks like it's a sticker. And people constantly, it's like, is that real? Like, I think so. If you're going, if you go to All American, you guys will meet in person. I will guarantee it. I'm pretty pretty sure. I can't remember. I was, Jill told me what shows that I was working and I forgot. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So I have a question to get us started. Well, actually, I'm going to ask you just to make sure. Do you compete? I do not yet. Do not yet. Okay. Can I ask you about that? Okay. All right. Cool. Then. And we're back. So, Sarah, you mentioned being sponsored by these companies and being on a pro team. So do you have plans to compete? Yes, I absolutely do. Um, I many times was signed up to do it um, and life got in the way. Mm -hmm. As it often does. I had to back out. Um, Originally, I got Renegade, my male standard poodle, to be a competition prospect because I felt most comfortable using my own dogs. And yep, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is the perfect size, but she is awful. Uh, so it's oh, get a nice scissor finish on her hair, um, at least in a short amount of time. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, get another dog. Why not? And I got him, and his hair is fantastic, but he is giant. I was going to say, he's huge, though, right? Yeah, he is 29 inches at the withers and almost 70 pounds. He is a big boy. So oh, my God. Get him done in two hours and 15 minutes. There's no way. Um, oh, the, my God. The plan is absolutely to get into the ring and start competing. Um, right. Yeah. It was a matter of timing and um, also, like, one of my main jobs with Foxy Roxy's is working the booth. So it's hard to find a time. Oh, to be able to leave for like the four hours it would take um, to prep and they all, they would allow me to do it. It's not that that's holding it back. It's just if I, you know, had the decision, I would choose just helping out at the booth more just because I'm really nervous and anxious about getting in the ring. Um, cause yeah. I'm my biggest critic and yep. I do not take constructive criticism well. I don't think anybody does, even though we like, no. we do. Well, because it's still, it's still, and it's hard to not see it as like a personal jab. Yeah. And I'm also lazy and don't practice breed specific trims outside of uh, when I do. So then you put that added stress on yourself. So um, I really need to whip myself into shape, which as you, I think you might've saw, I just put Renegade into a modified continental and, um, also, too, I did just have back surgery in April. That's right. Um, you did. Why are you grooming? I'm stupid. That's why. <laughs> I, I feel you. I went back way too soon after my surgery, yeah, too. Yeah, he was getting matted, and I realized. He- oh, I did yeah. see. I did yeah. see him. Oh, look at his little naked yeah, butt. His dad was brushing him, and I stupidly trusted that I trained him well enough. And I- Brushing. I was a owner. <laughs> And what's really was funny it? Is I would like watch him. We've got the Chris Christensen brush brushing comb, and I would sit there and watch him sit there and brush him and comb him, and I just blindly believed he was doing. 
Oh. He tried, but then one day I was like playing with Renegade and I was petting him, and then I like went to the back of his top knot, and it was just a solid no. Jump. And I was starting feeling around, and I was like, oh god. And then so uh, about a month or two ago, one of my employees, bless her soul, groomed both of my poodles for me. Aw. So much time had gone by and I was like you know what that's a lot of work to ask of her she's already really busy and then yeah my physical therapist and I had been talking about it like maybe going back limited time and I was like well if I can't bathe and groom my own dogs and I'm not ready to go like yeah exactly I mean he is kind of a behemoth yeah. though so I mean it was a bad idea but I <laughs> and it didn't hurt too bad <laughs> okay okay put kind of a competing on the back burner um I uh, yeah, I was going to compete in Pasadena because it's the closest show to me. I yeah, was going to use Kiki and it was going to be fine. And then I actually ended up getting a job opportunity from Berkeley to work the registration for them. Oh, so I was like, I want to do that. <laughs> so I was like, eh, you know, get off the list. Let someone else who's waiting to do it, who has more. Right. You know, in, and it's not that I'm not interested. It's just my nerves and anxiety. And I'm like, you know what? Give myself a little more time to practice and then we'll go from there and we'll see because also so oh, oh no. go ahead you're good i was oh i've always thought that competing was kind of like the pinnacle like that's what everyone needed to work to and like that's how i'm going to show i'm a successful groomer is i'm going to compete <sighs> but i literally couldn't even get over the idea of like any of it mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know how. And everyone's like, oh, no, nerves are normal. It's normal to be anxious. I'm like, I don't think you understand. Not normal. Like, if anyone was around me, and some people were. Um, in fact, in our last episode, we talked about um, how stressed Meg was after a day at the trade show in Tacoma. And that was just, like, a lot of stress. I mean, a lot of other things, like, there was, like, 19 red flags or something like that. I don't remember. I, It was great. You should listen if you haven't yet. Um, but the fact that I was teaching for the first time on the Sunday. Mm -hmm. So, it was just, like, and I'm, like, experiencing that and having that whole huge weekend-long bout of anxiety over just teaching. Mm -hmm. Competing seems, like, tenfold to me. Um, and plus I got to source the dog and I got to do this and I got to do that. I got to get the dog there. I got it. And I'm like, you know what? And then I finally was like, it doesn't make me any less of a groomer to not compete. So I am now completely satisfied in my decision to never mm -hmm. compete. Yeah. And I was thinking too, like I said before that I like would feel most comfortable using my own dog. That makes mm -hmm. because they're takes out one There's of those factors. Yeah. Pasadena and Tacoma that I can realistically bring my dogs with me without having to fly them across the country and and then you know trying to rent a dog from someone and mm -hmm. all of mm -hmm. that and then even to i'm like and then my fear is like someone's gonna lend me their dog and i'm gonna do such a horrible haircut that they're gonna hate it hate me because i oh, i did a i feel you i feel yeah, you and even to i'm just like i have the like fear of like i'm gonna accidentally cut the dog or yep like, like it's gonna, gonna be tragic my hair or just something horrible is gonna happen in my universe that it's just not going to work out like the dog's going to get sick like the morning of or I right to, right so then i'm like just save yourself the money and don't do it and then also too you know like there's rescue and all of that yep yep then there's the anxiety of you know you don't know what kind of dog you're gonna have well i'm like what if it tries to eat and me and i have seen that happen in some situations and then i had i don't know if you heard about the little snafu i tried to adopt one of the dogs in pasadena and the woman claimed that the dogs were not for adoption and then turned it into the dog that i wanted was an expensive breed and didn't think i was qualified who take the dog. Yeah. So that was like, yeah. So I what, what was the dog? What was this expensive it breed? It was a beaver terrier. And it Oh. But what bugged me most was the dog very recently had puppies. Oh. So I'm concerned that she was breeding them to and but that and didn't want to give away the dog because the dog is making her money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now I have concerns that if I signed up for rescue, that I would fall in love with the dog and want to adopt it. Oh. 
and then something would yeah. happen. I just have to say how much it bothers me. That's the pronunciation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it bothers me so much to the point that I literally was about to have to be like, what breed is that? And then my brain like caught up and was like, oh, it's a viewer. Mm -hmm. I know it's not. I know it's not. But I it goes back to the spectrum thing. It's every single day there's a new word of the English language that <laughs> enrages me for the entire yeah. day. And then I realized, I don't know if this is something that I taught to my son or if he is also on the spectrum, but he was reading something and he came across the word comb, like a comb. A comb. I kept mm -hmm. going comb. Oh, oh, bless. And I was like, why are you saying it like that? And he's like, why is there a B in this word? And then I started saying it. I was like, you know what? I couldn't tell you. And then both of us were angry about the fact that. <laughs> comba, comba. <laughs> but I get it. Like that's your child, and I was like, "Yep, that's my child." Like, him to hate the English <clears throat> language because, like, there'll be um, one word that always gets me is windshield. Nobody says windshield. No, they say windshield. There's no D in that word. Well, except for the end. But yeah, no matter where in the country, it's not an accent thing. Nobody pronounces the D. God, that sounds weird when I try to. It's just, oh, it makes me so angry. Wind shield. Why is our wind? And then drawer. 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 <laughs> drawer. Yeah, just, why? Why did we do this? <laughs> and see, I love words. I love English and knowing words and grammar and stuff like that, which is why I really find a lot of peace in proofreading mm -hmm. and editing, except for when I make a mistake, which is very, very seldom but it happens um down the word like, first, first step is admitting <laughs> what the heck is why is it spelled this way it doesn't make any sense but see like a lot of these words these like i don't know what wor word to use see i'm like oh, i know all the words and then i can't even think of the word i'm trying to think of um unique not very frequently used words i guess i don't know um a lot of them i've only read so then my pronunciation is abysmal. Uh, um, Yasmite. I thought it was Yasmite National Park <laughs> for literally like 25 years of my I life. I was like, what is that word and what does it mean? I had no idea. It's Yosemite. <laughs> Why would it be Yosemite? Why? <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited for when you are here. I want to see what words you can pronounce or what cities you can pronounce from Wisconsin. Oh, Wisconsin. That's going to be really fun. We can record it if My you wish. My ex-husband has family in Waukesha. Yep. Waukesha. I'm an hour away from here. I'm sorry. You said you're from where? From <laughs> what? And then it's like adjacent to Wanaki. And I'm like. You're like, okay. And not too far from Maconamawak. Yeah, those oh see, like the ones I said are the normal ones. <laughs> it just gets weirder the more that you uh, look at it. So I, I'm really good once I'm told, though, because like, for example, I've been to see Angie Coates over in Massachusetts for two visits now uh, for Bun Buns. And um, she made certain that I knew how to say it because the city looks like Worcester. Mm -hmm. no. It's Worcester. <laughs> Wusta. So I say it like, I mean, like I, if I could actually speak in a New England accent, like overall, I would fit yeah. in. But it's like I sound like just Meg, and then Wusta, and then not just Meg again. Uh, so I, it's fun. That's, that's one of my favorite things too about going to all the trade shows is all the groomers coming from all the different parts. Like, you know, Angela and Adrian coming from the deep south, and then yeah, yeah, Kelsey and Jay when they get going. Or I all oh, and oh, and Anne Francis. Oh, I love oh. her talk. She has the best accent ever. Where is she Boston, from? Boston, I believe. Oh, yeah. Oh, Boston. I can listen to her talk, and it's just it's so so deep. I think one of my favorite things was um, listening to Olga. She was talking, and she was like, "Yeah, I'm from New Jersey." If you couldn't tell from my accent, and I was like, "Like, no, your accent is very clearly not." Yeah. I'm trying to think. Yeah, Russian? Russian? Okay, okay. I was like, no, you can't hear anything else but the Russian. <laughs> Maybe if you're t listening really closely, I don't know. I haven't spent a lot of time around her. 
I'll have to ask Brittany. It's so fun listening to everyone's different accents. And then I, yeah, I, like, I love accents from listening to their accents. Cause I know I've been told that I have a California accent and I don't hear it. Obviously. I don't think any of us hear our own. I was going to say, I, I, I am fully of the belief I have zero accent, but I know that there's no way that yep. is true. We all, so <laughs> I've been working. Although I don't know what a California. Yes. Yeah, I think it's the, the laid back surfer lingo that we use. Like yeah. oh. originated in California is hella. Hella. <laughs> area that I'm from. So okay. that's usually a dead giveaway when I'm traveling somewhere. If I do drop that word, people are like, oh, you're from San Francisco. I'm like, yep. <laughs> well, see, the thing is, so like I absorb through osmosis a lot of like you mimic location based vernacular and see now i'm just trying to show <laughs> off like ugh, ugh, why do i do this okay um but and it's now rubbed off on rachel because rachel says this now too i picked up op, op. like op, <laughs> op, from the midwest from dear stephanie here and i fucking say it all the time and now rachel says it all the time and that's one that won't leave me i really I like it that i struggle with is when they say pop instead of soda Oh. And I also had to learn what a bubbler was. <laughs> Does so make it's a water up? fountain, Meg? Yeah. So oh, okay. I'm like it's the brand. But, but oh, okay. The term for all of them, I don't understand. <laughs> but I guess you could say that well, for the, like Velcro. The best is when you ask when we ask and Kleenex a, when we ask for a time machine. It's, it's a it's an ATM. There's a brand of ATM that's T Y M E. And so they call it the time machine. Oh my God. That's <laughs> I would like to kindly say fuck that, off to that. that one at all. Yeah. Cause I'm like, I'm sitting here like, um, that hasn't been ex uh, like invented <laughs> yet. Like that doesn't actually exist. <laughs> um, you're crazy. <laughs> yeah. But then <laughs> Even if we talk to someone who's from the UK or something and they say, something, yeah, like I, I met one girl and she was like, stay on the footpath. And I was like, the, the what? footpath? I was like, what are you talking about? Sidewalk. That's what they called it. Oh, I, I am imagining like a trail through the woods. I was like, we're walking on the street. Where's the, where's the like, where's the trail? <laughs> the footpath. And That's so cute. 10 minutes later, we were getting in the car. And she wanted me to hold the food and the drinks. And she said, can you nurse these? <laughs> like, like, uh, bitch, what do I look like? Like, <laughs> like, what am I? I'm guessing that just means like, take care of yeah, these. Like, you take care of something, you're nursing it. And I was yeah. like, that's so weird. But my immediate thought is boobies. <laughs> so that would not work for me. Oh, my, uh, I went to Scotland for my, oh. oh, I went to Scotland for my anniversary and one of the first things I learned is they don't know what we mean what we mean when we say bathroom. Oh, they yeah. just say toilet. Mm -hmm. Oh, but I feel really toilet. weird, especially being Midwest, saying, "Where's the toilet?" Mm -hmm. That sounds so like crass. Oh, we mean the actual toilet itself, but <laughs> they refer to the entire bathroom as the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> so strange. But then, I mean, they. They say things like the bin and things like that. And we're just I've crap. seen it listed as the water closet. Yep, I've heard that before too. And I'm like, that's <sighs> yeah. What? And I think a shower. If I'm yeah, because that is very much like it's water and it's like closet size and it closes. But and... I think that's why other countries think Americans are so stupid because our descriptions are just straight and to the point of what it is. It's very descriptive of what it is. There is a lady on TikTok that does these comparison videos. I'm gonna yeah. have to find her and share because it's freaking hilarious. That sounds like it sounds like fun. Yes, yes. I love that. Um <laughs> so we are I will say like sorry, like diesel truck started up right outside my window. Um I will say I because I was raised in Virginia, which is technically the south it's south of the mason whatever um and then spent many years in florida it usually has to like 
it's usually only when someone else is speaking in a really thick southern accent but i can slide into that really easily except now that i'm learning more and more about autism i'm more thinking it's just mimicking yeah. and not me actually i mean clearly i'm able to do it but i'm like okay yeah. kind of like you said like huh that makes sense yeah. <laughs> that tracks well like i said before this i was doing my vocal lessons and I oh yeah is that like singing yeah so i mean i think were, too, were you there at karaoke in texas i was not no okay. because we definitely had our own I, airbnb and dipped out the world that i do sing and i can sing very well um the problem with that being is i am a natural mimic and i oh. cannot sing something unless i have studied exactly how the original is saying and how that singer sings it and i cannot just randomly start like spontaneous ad-libbing like i mean physically yes i can i just mentally need to be listening to it or know yeah so i'm yeah. now taking vocal lessons from a coach to help me learn my own voice and yay making less she's like that's actually a thing that a lot of singers do try to learn because they can't do that and I'm like well that's not going um, for me. but okay back from being able to do other things or right love right a song without having to sit there and listen to the song eight thousand times on a loop until i am confident that i've studied it well enough <laughs> right yeah so i am taking vocal lessons to learn how to not mimic i love it mm -hmm. And all this talk about songs, and now I have the fish song in my head again. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> if I were a fish and you caught me, you'd say, look at that fish. Okay. Now it's <gasps> I'm, what? I always get the uh, the corn song stuck in my head. <laughs> Same. Oh, it's corn. Yep. Big lumpy knobs. It's got the juice. It's got the juice. Damn TikTok. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> There's some really awesome things that have come out of TikTok I, and some really stupid things. I didn't know until I started using TikTok. I swear every day I learned like 10 things that I went 30 years without knowing. Yeah. Well, and it's also helped me with like self-diagnosing psychological stuff but, because... Like I said, meeting other groomers, you know, on the spectrum. Yeah. You realize like, okay, this is not normal and this is not what I thought it was. It makes a lot of sense all of a sudden. <laughs> yes, yes, it clicks. Um, so before we leave for the day, do you have any other little tidbits of anything for us? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I guess I would... Any behind-the-scenes secrets? <laughs> <laughs> I can't give those away. Um, <laughs> summarize on what I said is don't be afraid to be yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. If you think someone, oh, my phone is going off. Um, if you think someone is too famous to talk to you, they're not. Go up and talk <laughs> to that person. Ask for that picture. Ask your questions. Put yourself yep. out there. And you're going to feel so good about it. Be and if you don't, come find me and I'll kick their butts. Because all. I'm going to say, you got uh, all of us yeah. here. Yeah. And really just kind of face those fears but like you said stay afraid at the same time be, yeah. It, yeah. be afraid and do it afraid and it you're afraid. you're never gonna learn unless you put yourself out there and even if it doesn't work out you tried and that's okay and like i said at the end of the day we are all just groomers we're all yep for the dogs and the cats and the rabbits and we're shaving by holes whatever <laughs> other animal you're grooming but you're important and you matter <laughs> And, <laughs> and that's really what's important. And if finding, you know, what Meg and Stephanie have put together to help groomers on the spectrum or groomers who think they might be on the spectrum to come together and, you know, don't be afraid to ask those questions of, you know, this is happening to me or I'm doing this or I'm saying this or I'm acting yeah. is this normal. And, you know, it's not conventionally normal, but it's normal for us. And that's mm -hmm. okay. And even if it's not what we consider normal it's it's okay because we can't help the way we are but mm -hmm. exactly less of a person because of it and it makes me feel good to know that you guys are making the support system for us to bring us together and meet other people 
and learn so much because in this time that you guys have had this page started, I've learned so much about myself and been able to bring this to my psychiatrist and my therapist to work together to help with it. And it's helped me overcome a lot of my struggles. Well, yay. So whenever we actually end up having reviews or something, I'm coming (laughs) to you for a testimonial, (laughs) damn it. (laughs) After this. (laughs) <laughs> I guess the main thing is be afraid, but don't be afraid. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All of it. That was a wonderful little pep talk. Yeah. It has been absolutely awesome to have you here today that with us. Awesome. Um, yeah. So uh, where can people find you if they want to talk to you? Um, I am on Facebook. My name is Sarah Douglas. I am also on Instagram. My handle is SD Groomer. So my initials SD Groomer. Um, I'm also, I do have a TikTok. Um, I'm trying to learn how to post on it, but you can go ahead and follow me on there. There's some goofy videos of my dogs. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Box is always open. Um, like I said, I will be at Pet Quest. I will be at the Foxy Roxy booth. Most times you can find me at the Foxy Roxy booth. Even nice. if it's not about scissors or products, you have questions about anything. Come say Even hi. If you see me walking around the trade show or you see me eating chicken nuggets. Come because <laughs> I love meeting people. I love making friends. <laughs> I, If you have questions and I can help or I can answer those questions, I would love to. Aw. Well, awesome. Well, there you go. And uh, yeah, she'll be in the group. I will be tagging her when this episode posts. Yep. So you can, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, um, do you want to be part of a buy? I, I guess. Is that how we? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does. I mean, we recorded the outro, so it technically will play again. But I always like to ask so, because I think it's a really fun part. Yeah. How do you? So. I don't know. I would. Uh, well, do I usually read the the last bit? Yeah, just the have you have the day you deserve, and right. then it'll just play again, but it's okay. <laughs> All right. Have the day you deserve, and thank you for existing. Bye. Bye.